Nandini was reclining on a sofa bed in the specially decorated room in the guest area of the Kadamper mansion. She also looked very well dressed for the day. Her face was filled with a never-before-seen expression. It was clear from her half-closed eyes that she was daydreaming. Every time the black lids of the eyes were closed, magnetic light rays like lightning appeared and disappeared from the eyes. From this it was clear that although she appeared to be half asleep, her soul was thinking with inspiration. A closer look revealed that her half-lidded eyes were focused on a plume of smoke billowing from a bomb on one side of the room. A mass of smoke rose from the gund and swirled around and went up and spread and disappeared out of sight. I don't know what kind of scenes Nandini saw in those puffs of smoke. Suddenly she let out a sigh. Her coral petals said, Yes, yes. All the dreams I have dreamed have become nothing like the swirls that appear in this cloud of smoke. Even this cloud of smoke vanishes leaving behind it a wonderful fragrance. All my dreams have left behind has been cursed with pain and suffering and blasphemy. She murmured. At that moment Goddess. Goddess. Come in. Said Manamegali's soft voice. Come, mother, come. Will you ask me to come to your house? said Nandini. Manamegala opened the door and came slowly. But her countenance, her gait and the swing of her arms were full of excitement, and she seemed to be jumping and dancing. Nandini sat up a little and pointed to the ivory pedestal beside the bed and asked Manamegala to sit on it. Manamegal sat down and said, Devi. My Tamayan has taught me how I should behave towards them. He has told me a lot about the civilization of the southern people. He has told me that another person should not suddenly enter the room without asking. He said. Let the southern nations and their civilization perish. Forget what your brother taught you immediately. Never call me Devi or Empress. Call me sister. 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 Isn't it hard for you to have me bother you so often? It would be hard for me to bother you so often, if you stay here and don't leave me there won't be any trouble. Nandini smiled saying that. Manamegali, lost in that smile, looked at Nandini's face for a while and said, I have never seen a beauty like you. Not even in pictures. Woman. Don't fall in love with me anymore. Already everyone is talking about me as a mysterious Mahini. They are slandering me that I seduce the boys who come to my side. Sister. If I hear someone blaspheming like that, I'll cut off their tongue and see what else," said Manamekali. It's no use blaming you Rara, Manamekali. I'm marrying an old man, so that's what they're talking about. Manamekali's face shrunk. Yes, yes. Even I am saddened to think about it. My brother was also saddened by it. Can I slander someone for that? What? They are talking and talking, Manamekali. They have been slandering the goddess Siddha in the town. So what has Siddha lost? Let it be my business and tell me about you. What do you have to say about me sister? Adi, golly! Didn't you say that I will come this evening and tell you the secrets of your mind and go away? What do you say you have to tell me now? After saying that, Nandini lightly pinched Manamekali's beautiful cheek. Sister. I've always wanted to be with you like this. If you give me self-reliance and make it possible for women to marry women, I'll marry them. Said Manamekali. It has not been a day since you saw me. Are you speaking such hypocritical words? I am happy about it. I was so worried that my dear friend was not the same as you. All the girls in the Chola country's house will go in search of that old devil, but you are the only one left for me. But what you said a moment ago is an unethical thing. It has never happened in the world to marry a girl to a girl. You should settle for marrying a boy. What about staying a virgin, sister? No, my dear. No. The world will never let you go as a virgin. Your mother and father will not let you go, neither will your brother. Their minds will be at peace only if someone ties you around a boy's neck. If you are to marry, Tell me whom you love to marry. Ask me by name, sister. I'll tell you. 
All right, let me just ask, do you want to marry Madhuran Thakdeva, the best in Shiva devotion? Or do you prefer to marry Aditha Kari Kalar, who has great prowess? Suddenly, Manamegali smiled brightly as if she was thinking of something. Nandini said, Why are you laughing, Manamekali? Do you think I am joking? Your Tamayan asked me to come here mainly to decide this matter. Kari Kalar may come here in a little while. Your Tamayan will also come. I have promised him that I will know your private life said Nandini. I don't know what my privates are, sister. What can I do? Tell me what you are laughing at. Asked Nandini. One thing came to my mind when I mentioned the name of Madurn Docker. Four months ago, he had come to this house once. He got into the Mudupalak where they used to come and brought a curtain without anyone seeing. We did not know that secret in that param. We were thinking that they were the ones who had come. Why didn't the Queen of Palyavar come to that param? We were asking each other. Sister. Didn't you say earlier that women cannot marry women? My marrying Madhurand Hagar is like marrying a woman. Nandini smiled understandingly, yes. I too thought you wouldn't like Madhurandaka. I told your brother too. Madhurandaka is already married to my brother-in-law's daughter. She is so arrogant, you can't live a day with her. Then tell Prince Kari Kalar that you have given up. Said Nandini. I will not say so, sister. I never saw him, how could my mind have gone to him? Adu. Is it the case that the women of the kingdom only look and give their hearts to them? Have you not heard of women in stories and epics who fall in love after seeing the pictures and hearing the fame? Yes, yes. I know Aditha Kari Kalar is a warrior and I know that his fame has spread all over the world. Sister. Did Aditha Kari Kalar cut off the head of Veera Pandayan with one cut? Is that true? Manamegali did not notice how horrified Nandini's face became at that moment. Nandini looked away for a few seconds and turned away. By then, her face was as old as ever, with a mesmerizing charm that bewitched the onlookers. Manamekali. Do you consider cutting off one's head in one fell swoop as a great act of bravery? Isn't that a terrible monstrosity? She said. I don't understand what you are saying, sister. Isn't it heroic to cut off the head of an enemy? How monstrous! Think of it this way. Imagine that an enemy comes to cut off the head of someone dear to you. Think of your daughter-in-law or a lover whom you intend to marry. While he is lying wounded, another enemy of his comes to cut off his head with a knife. Think about that. Do you admire the bravery of one who comes to cut like that? Asked the Queen of Pavur. Manamegala thought for a moment and said, Sister. You ask a very strange question. But I will give the answer that seems to me. If such a situation were to happen to me, I would not stand idly by. I would snatch the knife from the hand of the slayer and stab him to death. She said. Nandini hugs Manamekali passionately. Nandini said, My dear. You have given a good answer. You are so intelligent and anxious to find a good husband. Even Aditha Kari Kalar doubted whether he would be a suitable husband for you. I think so too. After hearing about Kari Kalar's character, I feel a little scared when I think of him. Shall I tell you what is in my heart, sister? Asked Manamekali.